All right, so hello everyone and welcome to our webinar today on uh, sustainable food service. Thanks so much for joining us. Just a few quick housekeeping items. All of uh, the microphones have been muted to prevent any background noise. If you do have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to go ahead and you can type them in the question or the chat field on the right hand toolbar. And we'll be sure to get to them at the end of the webinar today. Also, the webinar is being recorded, so you will get an email after today's session with the link to that recording. So my name is Savannah, and I am joined by my colleague, Lindsay, and we are both waste diversion specialists here at Bush Systems. And if you're not familiar with Bush, we are a designer and manufacturer of customized recycling and waste containers. So today we have the pleasure of having a special guest speaker, Kimberly Smith. And Kimberly is the Director of Conferences and Events for ACHI. ACHI stands for the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education. And Kimberly will be speaking shortly to her experiences in the industry and the leaps that she takes to ensure that all of her events are sustainable. So today we're gonna to be talking about the food service industry in relation to conference and convention centers. So food service is actually the second largest private sector industry in the US. And these conference venues are often very big and see a lot of attendees coming and going. It's an ongoing struggle for people to be able to provide meals to visitors, ensuring that the proper amount of food is being served, not too much and not too little. So this is a huge task to be faced with. So today we're gonna to talk about some of the ways that you can succeed and offer some different tips and tricks uh, that you can incorporate at your next event to make it a green one. So conference centers often generate a large carbon footprint and really have a negative environmental impact on the communities that they're hosted in. So from this infographic here, we can actually see that 70% of an event's carbon footprint actually comes from the air travel by attendees. And the next culprit is 10% from car travels. So our focus today is gonna to be on the food waste. So although from this graph, it's only responsible for about 3% of an event's carbon footprint, there are a lot of other negative implications of food waste that just can't be ignored. So mishandling food, oversupply, um, and under eating are some of the main culprits for food waste. And this is just contributing to our global epidemic where approximately one third of all food that's produced is actually wasted. So in the year 2014, the US Natural Resources Defense Council actually reported a loss of $165 billion um, due to food waste. So to put that in perspective, that yearly volume alone has the potential to feed about 25 million people. And when we look specifically at conference centers, experts predict that as much as half of the food that is, act is actually tossed out, and most of the time it's actually landfilled. Another staggering statistic is that 50 to 70% of this weight uh, is actually compostable. And it's estimated that for every one kilogram of food waste, this produces approximately two kilos of carbon dioxide emissions. So when we researched these statistics, we really felt that there was a huge need to be able to share the ways um, that food waste can be reduced and also educate on the importance of sustainable food practices at these venues. Okay, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about why it's important to make your event sustainable. So firstly, by sharing your su sustainable successes, you can help other businesses to implement environmental initiatives through your leadership. Showing your commitment to sustainability will help attract and retain employees. Additionally, when hosting sustainable events, doors are open to new clients who align with these practices. It's a great PR opportunity as well. When you present your conference as environmentally sustainable, you are able to gain the recognition of being environmentally responsible and market yourself this way. Specific to limiting food waste, financially you will begin to see cost savings. If you log data for food consumed and food wasted at your conferences, you can start to order less food for future events. 
uh, that will more accurately match what your attendees are actually eating. And this can be a major cost cutting initiative. And you can also reinvest this money that you've saved into things such as more local food and higher quality ingredients, which will further increase your sustainability and attendee satisfaction. The obvious reason for why it's important to make your event sustainable is an overall decrease in the environmental impact of this gathering. Okay, so a simple and free approach to reducing food waste is to encourage your, a waste fighting culture within your food service operation. You'd be surprised how much small ch changes such as incorpor incorporating waste diversion accomplishments into team meetings can contribute to increased diversion rates. If you wanna take it a step further, you can provide incentives for team members to reach waste reduction goals. Being sure that you are providing positive encouragement and keeping up morale around the topic will ensure that preventing food waste is always at the forefront of your team's priorities. So you can also consider looking into some zero waste training programs available in your area. Programs exist that are specifically targeted towards event planners and in some parts of the US, it's actually mandatory for event producers to participate in some free training of this kind. And this is true for San Francisco, where all event producers must attend free zero waste event training. And this kind of training will cover aspects such as composting, holding a water bottle free event, tracking your waste at your event and more. San Francisco's leadership in this area really shows how important it is to have training on waste diversion. And we hope that it will encourage you to seek out some potential resources in your area. So there are a lot of different efforts that convention centers can actually take to reduce food waste. Uh, we've created a checklist that you can feel free to print off. Uh, if you use the toolbar on the right hand side under the tab handouts, we've downloaded the checklist there for you and you can print that off and use it to uh, your benefit. We've actually broken down the points into different subcategories, being event preparation, food service uh, recommendations, and tips to reduce waste. So here on the screen are some even more ideas that uh, you can use to help you improve. So the obvious one is serve less food. So attendees are really busy walking around, attending sessions, and they're likely not overeating to the point that they're full. So consider the number of attendees that are actually going to be present and then communicate with your caterer how much food you uh, think will be required. We see common lunch items, including pizzas, so serving these on trays instead of in boxes, uh, buying in bulk wherever possible, menus can be viewed online or on boards instead of printed individually on paper, compostable takeaway boxes are an option, cloth napkins instead of paper napkins, avoiding providing disposable straws but still having uh, reusable straws available for those who require them. And consider start tracking the quantity consumed at your conferences and events. So this gives you uh, the hard data showing you the food service demand, and you can use that to determine the amount of food that's needed for your future events. Another consideration is if you're pre-setting tables, only pre-set about 80%. The other 20% of tables, you can put reserve signs on them. And then when people are arriving all throughout different times, those 80% of tables can be served, and then you can start removing those reserved signs as necessary and plate those seats as required. And this is just giving you the opportunity to reduce the amount of food that's going untouched and being completely wasted. So more than a quarter of the world's 50 largest food companies actually measure food loss within their operations. There um, are a lot of different software options available for this purpose. One of the more popular ones being Lean Path is app. So it actually tracks the volume of wasted food. So using a tablet or a kitchen scale, you can actually weigh what you're throwing out. And this data is translated into different graphs on a desktop dashboard. So the feedback from the software allows you to make adjustments in purchasing, production, uh, menus, staff training, and prevents future food waste. You can even use this technology to actually calculate your menu's total carbon footprint.
Oh my goodness. <laughs> I went the wrong way. Sorry. There we go. So uh, this case study here is from the University of Illinois. So they had a huge issue of food waste at their salad bars. So they were constantly feeling this pressure to keep it fully stocked and pretty right up until close. So this was leaving huge food waste uh, by the end of the day. So in order to target this, they started switching to uh, holding pans that were substantially smaller to the previous ones. And then this way, they only had enough ingredients available for the equivalent of one salad. And then this, along with a lot of different other organic waste reduction efforts, actually resulted in the university reducing their food waste by a total of 63% since um, the year 2015. Okay, so something that we believe is one of the most important sustainable event components is having a food donation service uh, to partner with in place to collect any leftover food that you do have from your event. Uh, so a lot of venues will pride themselves on providing tables that are full of bagels and rolls for breakfast, a full plated service at empty chairs scattered around for lunch, and endless baked goods at snack periods. So actually partnering with a third party company that will rescue uh, this fresh, healthy excess food and give it to people who are in need can ultimately be the answer to achieving a zero food waste event. There have been a variety of success stories when it comes to recovering food, so we're going to go through three of them here that we came across. Um, one conference in Las Vegas at the Rio rescued 3.5 tons of food over just a three-day period and donated that. Um, the Shaw Conference Center in Edmonton consistently works directly with meeting planners to make events sustainable and they execute waste audits at their seven sustainable conferences and generate an average of 78% waste diversion rates. In 2016 alone, they donated about 3,500 pounds of healthy food to the Edmonton Food Bank while composting an additional 200,000 pounds of food waste that otherwise would have ended up in the landfill. And lastly, the Metro Toronto Convention Center here in Ontario contributed, contributed over 90,000 kilograms of food to organizations in Toronto that support individuals struggling with hunger in its 2017-2018 fiscal year. They work with events and conferences to reduce food waste and ensure that extra food items are donated to organizations in Toronto that fight hunger. So another aspect that you can look into when planning your event is LEED certified conference centers. So LEED certification, if you're unclear, um, stands for Leaders in Energy and Environmental Design, and it's a symbol of achievement and sustainability. So points towards LEED certification are achieved through various categories. Um, some of them include air quality, waste diversion, and energy use of that building. And these all add up towards achieving either a basic silver, gold, or platinum certification level. So there are 20 convention centers um, within the United States that are actually LEED, Platinum, or Gold certified. So those are the two highest rankings you can get. And we have highlighted here the top centers that have Platinum and Gold certification. Um, so if you want to take a look at this list, hopefully for you there are some familiar names um, that you're seeing there. And if you see some that are local to you, we hope that they will be considered as a venue for your future events. Okay, so also having sustainable menu options. Um, if you have an accurate ordering system in place, this will allow you to avoid over ordering food, which will lead to food waste. Um, these systems ensure you don't run out of food because they're designed to carefully calculate food per person. And you can also have guests pre-order their food, which will accomplish essentially the same thing. And additionally, offering only organic or plant-based meals will promote a healthy lifestyle while also reducing the event's carbon footprint further down the process change, chain. And having tablets out on tables allows for automated ordering systems and cuts down on printing costs. So just before we continue on, there's been a couple questions regarding the slides. So um, if you're interested in the slides, that's no problem. We have your uh, email address um, so we can send you the slides if you just request them in the question um, in the question field. We'll be sure to get them to you. 
So there's a lot of different sustainable food certifications that are out there available to food producers. So if you're responsible for sourcing the produce for these menu items, make sure it's a priority to source from those that are certified. So feel free to open up the conversation with your food suppliers about whether they source sustainable food um, or if they're willing to start making this a priority. So we found a couple examples of sustainable food certifications. We're going to give a short summary of three of them. And if there's a particular certification that interests you, you can visit their respective website and um, get that information. So the first is Food Alliance. So they actually certify agricultural operations, food processors and distributors. They follow criteria that includes fair working conditions, proper health, and treatment of animals, reduced use of pesticides, proper recycling, and traceable supply chains. So certifications are based on extensive standards that are assessed by a third party inspector, and they offer consulting for businesses that are actually interested in developing these strategies through different orientations and training for staff. The second is MSC, which is for certified sustainable seafood. So this get this is given to wild fish and seafood items or from sustainable fisheries that have been evaluated through their standards. So their certification means that the product has been assessed with requirements that look at the impact of wild fish, fish populations and other ecosystems. And the third and final is Rainforest Alliance Sustainable Agriculture Certification. So that one is a mouthful. <laughs> it gives you the opportunity. Um, you might have actually recognized this one with the green frog seal. And it promotes sustainability on farms around the world. It certifies farmers, producers based on a set of standards uh, that look at environmental, social, and economic criteria. And you can actually purchase food products with this seal with assurance that the product is easily traced back to a well-managed farm. Okay, so recycling efforts at your conference and convention centers. In order to strive for a successful, sustainable conference or meeting, it's important to keep recycling and composting efforts top of mind from the initial planning stages. So select a venue that has a recycling and composting program already in place, or make sure that you're making sure they can cater to your requests with developing a recycling and composting program. Items accepted in recycling and compost streams, um, they differ variously in every region. And as you have people attending from a variety of locations, everyone is going to have different habits for materials that are accepted where they are from. Uh, so therefore, proper communication on what is accepted per stream at your event is highly important. Making the action simple for people to understand what goes where will help to better your diversion goals for sure. This is where clear and accurate signage is gonna come in. So when setting the event space, it's important to provide waste stations and signs to help exhibitors and attendees sort their waste properly. It's also important to make the recycling experience a positive one for both exhibitors and attendees. So a desk side recycling container should be provided for each exhibitor so that they can easily empty it at centralized stations throughout the exhibit. Recycling stations can also be mapped out on floor plans so that they can be easily located by exhibitors and attendees when they need them. So also bin and station consistency along with proper signage and colors have shown to increase diversion rates. And here at Bush Systems, we currently have a promotion available until the end of December that highlights three different containers of ours that may help achieve this. So this includes the Evolve, the Boca, and the Aristotle models. All three of these are best sellers for conference and convention centers and are from our designer series of bins. If any of these catch your eye, please let us know and we can provide more information to you about this after the webinar. Okay, so we're now happy to introduce our guest speaker to the webinar. Kimberly Smith is the Director of Conferences and Events for AISHI. And this year, the conference brought together 1,800 attendees from 18 different countries to advance sustainability. 
The conference this year in Pittsburgh resulted in an 89% diversion rate and natural ventilation was used 87% of the time and 75% of the food was locally sourced. Thank you so much for being with us today, Kimberly, and we are now switching the controls over to you, so the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Lindsay and Savannah, and hello, everyone who's on this webinar. Uh, what a great day to be talking about food waste, and in case you're not familiar with what today is, it's Giving Tuesday, uh, which is now seen as a, a huge global day of uh, giving back to folks in whatever way, whether it's contributing money, whether it's eliminating food waste so that others can eat, uh, it's a good day. So I'm happy to be here. And I'm curious to know, Lindsay and Savannah, forgive me for uh, putting you on the spot like this, but is there any way we can take a poll? I'm curious to see or to know how many folks on this webinar are actually um, involved in planning events as a part of their daily uh, work responsibilities. Um, if you don't mind, I can create um, I can create that poll. It'll just take me a couple minutes here. So if you want to okay. go through uh, your first slide and then we can come back to it. Okay, that'll be just fine. Uh, I can always find that out later. Uh, but I want to make sure that I'm addressing uh, some issues. And by the way, you guys did a great job. I would have thought that uh, you were event planners, so you can tell that you've been at this a long time. So thank you for that. Uh, some of you might hear uh, some of this information repeated, and that's okay because I think we learn uh, oftentimes by repetition. Uh, and sometimes it takes us a few times to hear something in order to really absorb it and digest it. So it's okay if you'll hear information that's repeated. Um, I have three things I want to accomplish today. The first is for us to understand uh, the issues surrounding food waste, to, to know what some of the common challenges are in trying to offer sustainable dining, uh, especially in our events sector, and then to give you some, uh, some practical solutions to help you either minimize or completely eliminate food waste at your event. And you'll be the judge of whether or not I've accomplished those, those three objectives. So I wanted to share this, uh, this statement on food waste because I thought it was important, uh-oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. I thought it was important for us to, to all get on the same page about why this issue deserves our attention and action. And this statement, in my opinion, beautifully sums up the issue of food waste. It's taken from a policy brief uh, that was recently issued by the Global Panel on Agriculture and Food Systems uh, in partnership with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. For the average consumer, we don't often think about how food waste relates to the environment and the economy, but it's and it's all related. And I thought that uh, I, don't, I don't really know if I've ever seen it described. Not that it's a beautiful thing, but it's a great synopsis of what we're really talking about when we're talking about food waste. It's not just uh, people not being able to eat. It's not just what are we you know, putting into our landfills, et cetera. It's, it's all interconnected. Hey, Kimberly, sorry for interrupting. I created the poll. Did you want me to send it out to everyone? Yes, please. Thank you. Watch. So, and I found this graphic. Thank you so much. And I found this graphic um, because I thought that it would really encapsulate a way to make you think about uh, food service and food waste, rather, in a more holistic view, just sort of like we, we think about sustainability. Uh, in our opinion, sustainability is not just about the environment, it's about a myriad of things and how we all coexist on this planet and whether it'll be here. So I just wanted you to, to really come to terms with what we're looking at when we're talking about food waste. And this is just, these are just the numbers of waste in the United States. These are not global numbers. And to bring this point home, uh, a little bit more, uh, I found this graphic by the Natural Resources Defense Council. 
40% of all food that is produced never gets eaten by humans. And I thought that, wow, that's, uh, that was really, that's truly enlightening. Um, and I think we need a cultural shift in the way we look at food waste so that we can form some lasting impacts that will benefit society as a whole. Food should not be used as a garnish for landfill. And I'll just leave it right there. So let's talk about some of the challenges in the in the events industry. These are things, by the way, I, sh I should say this. And before we move forward, I want to go and look at this poll. So how many folks do we have that are that work day to day in the events industry? Let me get to the poll results. So it looks like 85 percent are currently in event planner roles. 50 Sorry, 85% are not in event planner roles. 15% are event planners. Ah, really? Okay. Well, I'm going to, uh, it's okay because you're all going to learn uh, about this today. So I take it that you're here, not necessarily because you're an event planner, but you have some role to play within your company or organization that involves planning events and food service. So you'll still get something out of out of this webinar. So I want to thank you for for being here. But let me go back. I uh, well, I got to go back up, you guys. Sorry. <laughs> Hold on. Let's do this again. I think my my screen just froze. There we go. So here are the challenges that. As a, as, that I've seen constantly in the event industry. And this is not, uh, this is not, you know, to, to be overly critical of them. It's just to tell you what I've per personally witnessed as a person who, whose job it is to plan a sustainable, uh, a sustainable events. And the first thing is food service personnel aren't knowledgeable about sustainable practices. Some of them, when you even mention the word sustainability, it's uh, what? Uh, sustainability is not embedded in the culture. Uh, when you try to uh, plan sustainable meals, you are faced with exorbitant costs. There is a lack of knowledge in the supply chain sourcing. And then there's always this issue with food safety and traceability. So, the first thing that I want to tell everyone is that there needs to be, especially for us event planners, is a shift in our in our mindset, a, a change in our paradigm. And, and here's why. Because as meeting professionals, we we have an ingrained need to make sure there's enough for everyone and then some. And that attitude can be a boon for attendees, but it also runs counter to sustain sustainability and it paves the way toward mounds, if not tons of wasted food. So we're accustomed with working with abundance. You know, we don't want our buffet trays to get too low. However, we need to take account and to take account of what our refresh norms are. So I, I'd like to say to you, start thinking differently about how you how you plan your food service at your conference. You know, uh, our conference averages around 2,000 attendees, depending on where we go. But some of you are planning uh, conferences that are, you know, 10,000 people. And so unless we become more diligent uh, about how we do our food service, we're never going to solve this issue. And I think that it, Food, food waste diligence can take the form of simply waiting until a tray is empty instead of, you know, five to 10 percent full to refresh its contents. It's an adjustment for us as planners. You know, I have a buffet that you know, if I have a buffet that's full at the end of the, the event, that's not success. That's failure. And we have to give the catering staff permission to slow it down or maybe even uh, close a buffet. So I want to encourage everyone, start shifting your paradigm, change your mindset. You have to not be afraid to run out of food. Okay, so let's get into doing some of the nitty gritty. I wanna give you some, some real granular strategies to overcome those objectives uh, um, or, or challenges within the events industry. And just 
you know, you can do a lot of this is you doing your homework. I believe in holding people accountable. If you do not know about sustainability, food waste, how to make your event more green, as, as they say, uh, then it's up to you. And the first thing you need to know is that food service is always tied to the venue. Uh, my work with, you know, with food service, it doesn't matter, whatever convention center I use, I'm required by their policy to use the exclusive in-house caterer. That has pluses and minuses. It doesn't matter if you're doing a, an event in a hotel, uh, but you'll learn who the really good ones are and who are not so good. So my first step always begins with the venue. And you heard Lindsay and Savannah talk earlier about looking for venues who um, are, um, are committed to sustainability and who are LEED certified. This past year, we had our event in one of the, one, two out of the entire countries, platinum LEED certified facility. Next year, I'm going to a silver LEED certified facility. The following year, I'm going to a gold LEED certified facility. But there are resources for you to find out who's getting this right. And I just, there are three examples there. You go to USGBC's website, look at the Green View Green Venues Report, go to the Event Industry Council's website, they have a listing. You know, there are there are unofficial listings out there. CVent does a listing of the top green cities, not just venues. So there's a plethora of information for you to do your own homework. Create your own internal standards. Um, I know what I want, and I list out what I need in terms of service requirements, you know, whether it's, you know, detailing all, uh, putting things in bulk. I go beyond what is generally accepted in, uh, in, green, in the green meetings business. For example, I do not allow genetically modified products as a part of what I serve at the convention. Not, I, I want no GMOs. I don't use soybeans because 80 to 90% of the soybeans are GMOs. So you have to learn and start doing for yourself. So create your own internal standards. My list also um, uh, can be, I, I use things from like the Convention Industry Council. Anywhere I can find good practices for sustainable food service, I combine it with things that I want for myself. And I think about it very personally. You know, food is an emotional uh, activity. When people go to a conference, they want to feel good about what they're being served. So I think it's important for us to, to get this right. Um, and, if, and, you know, uh, if you have performance conditions that are outlined in your service and supply contracts, I think you'll do just fine. I also, as I'm starting out, and this probably should have been first, I included in my RFP. I don't go to a city, I ask if, uh, without knowing, first I'm doing all of my homework. So I'm not gonna put my conference in a city where they don't have any LEED certified, they have no commitment to sustainability, the city doesn't even have any sustainability initiatives. If the city itself doesn't have a web page on what it's doing about sustainability, I'm not even going to think about going there, chances are. But I think you should include everything about the food service, the type of food service you want, and, and, and ask about the recycling program, the energy and water and conservation practices, and, and how, they, how they purchase things in a responsible way? What are their practices? What are they already doing to ensure environmental sustainability that you don't have to institute? And I, and I start there and I would start small and then build from there. Uh, but the key thing is definitely start. Uh, and view your suppliers as partners. Remember, not everyone is on the same page as you. Um, you have to sort of view their shortcomings as a teachable moment. When I first started working with Aishi, sustainability is, is, you know, of course very important for us, but I've been doing meetings and events for almost 30 years. Uh, but this is the first time I've had an organization who is as committed to this notion of sustainability as Aishi. So I had to get it right. And I had, there were a lot of teachable moments but we have to move beyond the transactional relationships 
into a collaborative partnership with our food service provider, our donation agencies, our waste providers, and our uh, and other diversion partners. And now we truly have those relationships that help our conference achieve the kind of results we're, we're seeing now. So let's talk a little bit about how we can tackle food waste. I won't spend a lot of time on this because I think Savannah and Lindsay did a fantastic job, but we do have responsibility and how we tackle our food waste. And first, it starts with us in reducing the supply chain food loss, reducing waste at the event, repurposing and donating, and then recycling. So let's talk a little bit about uh, supply chain. And I'm gonna move through this really fast. The first thing is that we have to be flexible. Um, and, and that's because sometimes the folks that we're working with won't know all of the answers to your questions, but be flexible, not flexible in your standards, flexible in how you get the information you need. Ask your caterers to talk to the farmers and vendors about opportunities to reduce food loss. I, I, I'm always leaning on them as my partner to help me understand how can I, for the little bit of food waste I am going to have, okay, how can I make the best use of it? Uh, and that leads to bullet point number three, don't order more food and beverage than you need. Uh, I, I really can't say enough about this because I think this takes us back to our, you know, we're, we have this uh, overabundance uh, attitude that we have to make sure there's enough and, you know, we've got to keep resupplying, but we have to really start to understand the mentality that makes us order all of that food start ordering smaller quantities of bulk products. Just because you order a whole gallon of coconut milk doesn't mean you need whole gallons for everything. Maybe you start cutting it back to half gallons, okay? Use certified products, which Lindsay and uh, Savannah covered, and then work with your supplier to find other opportunities such as menu matching or menu sharing and try to reduce those special orders if, if nothing else to save on transportation costs. The key for me is knowing my demographic. So I don't order food that isn't likely to be consumed by the majority of the folks attending my conference. Uh, we, we don't, you know, we don't order meat because we went dairy, we went vegetarian and this year we tried to go 100% plant-based. So, you know, if you eliminate <clears throat> uh, meat and dairy, from your uh, event, that is the most resource intensive uh, item to produce, which is meat. And it's responsible for more environmental degradation than any other single industry. And it'll only get worse as the human population grows, uh, unless of course we start taking some real drastic steps. But you know, if, if you wanna have a, a, a conference where your food service is not a strain on the environment or any other natural resource, eliminate meat. And then I put the three columns and dairy. That's a hard thing to do um, or it's challenging because who doesn't want some cheese and cheese at the opening reception, right? But there's very tasty vegan cheeses out there that aren't made from dairy. Um, order food that doesn't easily spoil you know, whole fruit instead of cut fruit, reevaluate the dessert. The, um, I read somewhere recently that about 60% of the desserts get wasted. And one of the things that I do is if I, I, I rarely ever order off of the menu, but it's, and, and if I do, it's still customized. I'll take something from this entree and that entree, et cetera, and create my own. But if it comes with dessert, Instead of serving dessert right there at lunch, I'm going to serve, serve, uh, save the dessert from lunch and serve it for my as part of my afternoon coffee break. Because people have already eaten, they're pretty full, and most folks, they're going to waste that dessert anyway. Next is to reduce your portion sizes. I think you should always have a conversation with your caterer about your portion sizes. I've never worked with a food service provider that didn't allow me to change portion sizes. And sometimes that's the difference between being able to afford a particular menu offering and not having or uh, and not having a ton of food waste. Uh, so that's critical. Uh, and then eliminate any and everything that is single use. 
we we're very fortunate in that um for example we have a, a sponsor that provides reusable cups so that i'm not using you know any of these single use cups that you know are floating around etc that the caterer might put out um even even if they are biodegradable i don't want to use them you know it's like having people bring their own cups from home in a sense so do everything you can uh let's talk let's keep talking because this is where i the meat of what i want you to get today you have to analyze before you guarantee your accounts and when i say analyze i'm not just meaning like just looking at well how many people are registered how many meals do i need that's not an analyzing you really have to look at your conference and factor in no shows and you know and understand that you can lock off 10 percent of what you're about to order if you've got 2,000 people 10 percent of those people aren't going to show up for any meal function and that's a, that's industry-wide you won't find another standard out there that's been proven and guaranteed so just do it just lop off 10 percent right there off the top um and then start looking at your attendee behavior like and i'll give you a, a simple example for example for my own conference um by the time i have my closing keynote i have lost a solid 30 percent of my attendees now it would not make sense for me to order the same number or same same number of meals that I order for my opening that I would for my closing when I know that 30% of my attendees have left the conference early. And I think that that's how we start, have to start thinking. You have to look for ideas that will avoid waste up front and while simultaneously diverting waste to other channels and you know take into consideration everything you know about your conference to get those numbers down. You can also reduce the number of courses. Why do you need a three course meal? Why do you need a four course meal? Reduce it, deconstruct your meals. Um, one of the things that um, I like about deconstructed meals is that you know your people can pick and choose what they are going to eat and it produces less waste. Okay, if it's, if it's all combined, then you have to worry about, you know, people with different allergies, et cetera. And I will say this to all of you who are meeting planners, the 15% of you, if you stop as, if you start serving a vegetarian and plant-based menu without the use of any chemicals, without the use of GMOs and serve it uh, local, uh, organic, um, you will not have to ask an attendee a question about food allergies. You will not have to keep asking questions about food allergies. I remember we used to ask that question, what allergies do you have, and list them all from lactose intolerance to you know, just everything, it, the, it ran the whole gamut. If you were vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian, you name it. And now my question on food allergies is whether or not someone has an ADA requirement. And from the first time I asked that question where 35% of my attendees answered it, <laughs> which was completely overwhelming, I'm now down to two people who will say this is an ADA requirement. And one of them is a person who's allergic to various sulfites. And so if I'm eliminating things with chemicals in them, then she doesn't have anything to worry about and she can eat the food that I serve at my conference. And that's the benefit of really having healthy, locally sourced, organic, nutritious foods at your conference. And then of course, bulk it up you know do everything in bulk i do everything in bulk from even sugars salt pepper coffee you know creamer all that kind of stuff is done in bulk and then provide tap water over bottled you might say well why uh mainly because it's less expensive and less resource intensive and why create the use of plastics when you're trying to create sustainable dining so 
When it comes to uh, recovering your food waste, there is a hierarchy. And I think it's important for everyone to understand the hierarchy. And the first one is, is reduce it from the source. And that's all the things, some of, some of the things I just went over with you is, you know, understanding that you don't need to order so much food, all of that. Feeding hungry people, feeding animals, industrial uses, composting and landfills are the next steps to that. So when I do, when I have my conference, I spend the majority of the time at source reduction. I spend a lot of time and I, I work with my uh, chefs. Uh, if you are uh, in a convention center or hotel, always uh, and set the expectation when you're signing the contract that you will do some meal planning with the chef, not with the catering representative who's assigned to your account or the, the account executive. That's all fine and dandy. He or she can still be a part of that, but set the expectations that you do intend to have meetings directly with the chef who's responsible for meal planning. They are a tremendous help. Uh, they, they have a vast knowledge of resources. They know food, so use them to, to help you accomplish what you're, uh, to, to help you accomplish your goal. So let's talk about donate left, donating leftover food. Once you've planned everything at the source, you've done everything you possibly could to ensure that there would be very minimal food waste, if any. So then the question is, well, what are we going to do with leftover food? And the first thing is, is that you want to make sure that there's a channel for donating foods. And most places nowadays, most uh, venues have partnerships with, with any number of I just put these logos up here because they're some of the better known ones that are like nationwide. Um, and I use the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, and that's where I had my meeting this past year. However, every community in the country has a food bank. So no matter where you take your meeting, you'll always be able to find uh, a food bank. Uh, I thought this was important to put up here because I know a lot of event planners aren't really sure about whether or not they can donate food and get a little bit nervous. So I'm here to tell you today, and here's the law right here for yourself. You can screenshot this if you like, uh, that you will not get in trouble unless there is some uh, willful negligence. In other words, if you knew something uh, it, you know, was wrong and you allowed it to happen, encouraged it to happen, and, you know, someone was harmed by it, then, yeah, you, you have an issue. But I don't think that's what, that's not what we're, we're trying to do here. Uh, so, you know, encourage that, uh, encourage donations as much as possible. One of the things that a lot of people, I think a lot of event planners don't think about is that uh, donating leftover food can be used as animal feed to farms. Uh, you know, it's the third tier of the EPA's food recovery uh, hierarchies and far farmers have been doing this for centuries. Uh, I just would caution you, you know, extra due diligence because you have to understand um, what the regulations are. You know, you've got to understand, check with your local agricultural extension office or farmer's market or, you know, large animal veterinarians to find farmers who are already collecting or willing to collect your scraps. And you, you still have to work with your caterer. But I was, I've been able to do this for meetings I've planned before uh, because that's when I learned that coffee grounds, for example, uh, and very salty foods are not good for animals. I mean, of course, you would know that, but who knew coffee grounds? And they should be discarded or, or composted. Um, and then also, um, and this, this even happened this year, for any of the banquet food that was uneaten, uh, some of it uh, was allowed to go to the uh, cafeteria. And I think this is, if I didn't mention this before, let me make sure that everyone understands that one of the things you must do is give your caterer instructions not to unwrap anything, uncover, serve any food, you know, all at once. And they don't do it all at once, but, you know, tell them that you want to, you know, you really have to kind of just time it and measure it and 
because what you don't want to have happen is some perfectly good food. Let's say you had a, a huge pan of lasagna uh, and then only one person took a spoonful out of it, but that's all. And so now you're taking that whole pan full back, but that whole pan could have still been left and it looks a lot better. Um, I think, you know, we just, I think we have to do everything possible to make sure that we can make the best use of it. That's, that's my ultimate goal. And then there's composting. Um, so one of the things that I, ha I have event planners say uh, uh, to me is that, you know, I just, that composting, putting that food in there and then it can't you smell it, doesn't it stink? No, <laughs> it doesn't. So I just want you to know that I, this is a, an actual picture from my conference this past year. And I want you to see the, how, the, the, where the compost bin is located in, compar in comparison to our food buffet. You know, this should be the last step in your food waste strategy. It should come after all other attempts to minimize waste. But, you know, it's, it's still, it is a tool. And I use compost bins. I have them front and center. Um, and it, I think it was difficult for our industry to accept at first because everything we do is about the experience. But we should make it easy for people to do the right thing. This is part of the experience, too. So I wanted to put that picture there because compost bins don't have to look ugly. They don't smell. Um, and you can still use them. They don't impact the, the way your space looks, et cetera. The other thing I want to point out in this picture, too, is look how small this is. And I actually do buffets uh, because I like doing deconstructed meals. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys could see and notice though that looks awfully small. But I'd rather have, you know, eight to ten buffet stations and not have mounds of food. This was a day that we did our, pow our power bowl. Uh, but I but I just wanted to give you that insight so that you can see this is possible. And then the last thing is, is to communicate early and often. If you're making the effort to reduce waste at your event, let attendees, exhibitors, sponsors, presenters, staff, everyone know so they can become stakeholders in the effort. If you can tell a good story about what you're doing to minimize waste, it creates operational efficiency. Um, you know, it gets everyone committed to making the change. And I'm sure all of you have newsletters, websites, you've got, and most of us have mobile apps. Well, all of those things are created to engage in a meaningful way. But, and, and so reducing waste is the best story you can, you can use to start having those worthy conversations. You know, start, start talking about it. Start communicating, start telling folks what you're doing. We, we even have, like for our conference, I even do a, here's what you can do to help us. You know, when you're in your hotel rooms, I have it for every facet of my event, for exhibitors, because we don't want them, we're trying to produce a zero food waste event and a zero waste event. I don't want them coming and bringing out all kinds of handouts or what we used to call swag when we, we all know it's, it's not good anymore, right? Um, so there, for every sector, we're doing that for our event. And so you should too. Uh, I wanted to make sure that you had some of these helpful resources uh, because there's a ton of them. And look, I, <laughs> you know, these are just some of the ones in the United States, not even, you know, around the world. And, you know, I don't know where everyone is located, but um, I, I tend to, to have all of these bookmarked. So, of course, the Environmental Protection Agency has info on sustainable management of food in the USDA, United Nations, the, uh, if you're familiar with the sustainable development goals, uh, it's goal number two, okay? Um, even, and then if you, the Food uh, Events Industry Alliance has, uh, uh, you know, they took over the, well, not took over, but the, it, we used to have a green meetings, Green Events Industry Council, and so the Green Industry Council is now a part of what used to be called the Convention Industry Council, which is now the Events Industry Council. Uh, there's even a new ISO standard, uh, ISO tw uh, 2121 for sustainable events. 
Uh, you do have to purchase the document to really uh, get all of the standards and what they want you to do, but it's a worthy read. I'm still reading it, okay? <laughs> uh, it's a hefty document. So I want this to be your mantra for success moving forward. I know we're winding down, but I, I want if this is not this is not a saying that has been in the nomenclature for event planners, and that's reduce, reuse, and recycle. It's the three R's. It's part of the mantra of sustainability, but it needs to become part of our language in the events industry. Then the first thing is always how do we reduce usage of this and then if we have to use it how do we reuse it I, I don't print signs because I'm reusing them for example how do we recycle is the carpet are you putting carpet in your exhibit hall and if so is it recyclable or can you reuse it next year and I think that you'll find a whole lot of success with just some of those simple strategies but Make that your mantra, reduce, reuse, recycle. Reduce, reuse, recycle, has a nice little ring to it. <laughs> and then of course, if you want more information, here's my contact information. Um, I'm, um, I'm trying to get out there and spread the message. I'm, I consider myself to be a real advocate now for uh, producing sustainable events overall. So you can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, and these, this is an actual picture from my conference. I don't use tablecloths. I don't want to waste water with linens. If I go to a convention center and they have great um, tables, why put tablecloths on it? So what you see here, uh, uh, everything is compostable, except, of course, the, the reusable containers where the food is served. But the bowls were bamboo bowls. The cutlery was bamboo. The not, not, napkins were biodegradable, et cetera. Phew. Okay, I know that was a lot <laughs> to give you a, a great deal of information. There's a lot to learn out here. That was awesome, Kimberly. Thank you so much. Um, it's really good to be able to hear from someone who's actually working directly in this field. So we did have, um, we were able to get to most of the questions. There is a question for you, Kimberly. Um, someone asked, vegan menu options are something that I've been interested in for our future meetings. Was this something that was accepted by your audience or did you have some backlash? Oh, I had some backlash, yeah, because, you know, there are meat eaters and there are people in my uh, community who believe that we can be sustainable uh, and not have to go vegan. But I would differ with that and all the, the work that I've been reading, all the teachings that have been taught to me. Now, granted, I, I don't go up against anyone. There are, there are experts. I am just scratching the surface. I've only been at ASHI for three years, okay? But in that three years, my mind is exploding with information that I've learned. But I think that this is part of our uh, mission and that we should be walking what we talk. Absolutely. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much again. Um, you have some amazing standards that you're following. And I think that uh, for the audience today, you really are uh, an inspiration um, to everyone. So thank you again. Well, thank you. It was fun. All right, so I'm going to, as we're winding down here, so we just want to run a poll um, just to get a little bit of feedback. So Sorry, just bear with us here. Yeah. Here. All right, so just wondering where you heard uh, about the webinar today, if it was social media, Bush Systems website, email blast, um, word of mouth, or other. And we'll just let these responses come in. So just as we're getting these responses to come in, uh, that wraps up our webinar today. So thanks everyone so much for listening. We hope that you uh, learned some valuable information. Um, if you do have any questions, comments, or feedback, we were able to reply to most of the questions throughout the webinar. 
As I mentioned you earlier, you'll be receiving an email with a link to the recording. So please feel free to share that with anyone who would find this information valuable. Thanks so much again, everybody. Have a great day. Hey ladies. Savannah.